here, Wrestling Observer Live. Make some review also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, we got some good news. AEW was awesome last night. It was. God, I love that show. Christian mm-hmm. Cage, Matt Seidel. Very good match. I'll rave about this one for 30 minutes on the Brian and Vinny show tonight, how awesome Christian Cage is. Then they set up a match for the pay-per-view. Varsity- Did he outwork everybody for you? Uh, we'll talk about it. Let me get through this first. Varsity Blondes did a promo for the main event, which was a great promo. You never see these guys cut promos. They cut a great promo here about the main event. Moxley and Kingston, I got to find out more about this one because they cut a promo and there was a very obvious edit in the middle of it, and I can only imagine what happened. They must have loved the rest of it. Kingston and Moxley beat the acclaimed. Another very good match. Uh, they didn't bury the acclaimed, but I mean, it was a dominant win for Kingston and Moxley because they're getting the tag title shot of the pay per view. We had more, I mean, we had interviews up and down the show. Uh, Pinnacle had a segment, Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, Jericho and Dean Malenko, which was awesome. <laughs> Rebel and Akaru Shida were sitting on the show, but they knew it. And it was two minutes. They got it over with. And then they shot an angle for Akaru Shida and Britt Baker. We had a segment with this despicable human being, Don Callis, who for some reason I find so despicable, but when he's on the show, I think he's great. Super nice guy. Get along with him. But anyway, he did a you horrible would. thing. He tried to get a concussed Orange Cassidy when he wasn't in the right state of mind to sign a document taking him out of the match at the pay-per-view, but Orange wouldn't. Your kind of guy. Inner Circle and Jericho did a great promo building up the Stadium Stampede show. Serena Deeb and Red Velvet had, Mm. like, the most amazing match you ever saw in your life. Like, no, there was no right for it to be as good as it was. But it was great, and it was just, like, a miracle. I I looked at Serena Deeb, and it's one of those matches where I said, if I had to have one more match, I want it with Serena Deeb. (laughs) She'd carry me to an all-timer. And uh, Anthony Gogo beat Austin Gunn. Great promo by Kazarian. Great promo by Miro and Lance Archer setting up a match for the pay-per-view. And then, bro, the Young Bucks and the Varsity Blondes. If you don't like the Young Bucks, just shut the damn show off now. Go listen to another podcast. I don't care. I got plenty of listeners. These guys are the greatest tag team I ever saw. I mean, my God. They were so... And it's funny because a lot of people would think that when they saw a match with, like, Kenny Omega and Hangman Page. But it's like you're in there with Kenny Omega and Hangman Page. It is no disrespect to the Varsity Blondes. They did a good job in this match. But this match was... Awesome. And the Bucks are the just the greatest heel tag team. They make the the baby faces look so good. They're bumbling heels. They're bonking into each other. They're tripping, getting to the ring. It was the most old school. There was nothing like, oh, I don't like this because I'm an old, crusty old man. This was the oldest school, old school tag match you ever saw. It was freaking great. And they beat the guys, but, like, you just thought the Varsity Blondes were so great. I was in awe watching this match. I was in awe watching this match. And then afterwards, Moxie and Kingston hit the ring, and they beat up the Bucks and stole their shoes. (laughs) I love this show, dude. Like, no one's going to watch it. It's going to get, like, 700,000 viewers or something like that. But, man, if you watch this show, you were rewarded with a great Pro wrestling television show. God, I loved it. For hours, I could go on about this show. But I won't. Anything you'd like to add, Mike? I agree 100%. I really love this show. And it wasn't... They've had more impactful shows. They've had more newsworthy shows. But this was just a really... Fun, easy show to watch from top to bottom. I thought two hours flew by. I thought it was great for a lot of the same reasons that you mentioned. For the when Brian Pillman Jr. when they had he and Griff Garrison and uh, uh, oh with Julie Hart uh, standing there as that team, like they looked fantastic, and it was really the first time that. They actually, with Pillman's promo, what he cut, how everybody came across, like, for the first time, it was like, 
man, if this was WWE, they would have already broken them up, and Brian Pillman would have already turned on Griff Garrison, like, probably two weeks into them teaming together. But, like, with these two, it's, man, I want to see them continue to grow. And this is the first time I really looked at them and thought, this looks like like a legit team, and to have them stand there and cut that promo, like they they have never felt more like a real team than they did last night. And then they go out there with the Young Bucks, and it's one of the Young Bucks' best performances working with a team. And we've seen them against Top Flight, we've seen them against this team and that team and the other team. Like I thought last night. As far as them working with a team and getting them up to their level and making them feel like they're up to that level, damn, the Young Bucks did it. And look, it, it's crazy, maybe, that I prefer, in this era of tag teams where the Young Bucks are in, I prefer the Briscoe brothers. I prefer Claudio and Hero. Maybe even sometimes the Usos. But the bottom line is the Young Bucks are a Hall of Fame tag team. At the end of the day, at the end of this year, when the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Fame is announced, there is a damn good chance that the Young Bucks are going in. And oh, they're, you, they're running away with it. Are you kidding me? And the thing is, you can, again, your preference, you can say, man, I like the Briscoes a lot more than I ever liked the Young Bucks. I like the Usos more than I ever liked the Young Bucks. Does not take away what the Young Bucks have accomplished. And killer job last night. Serena Deeb is the best, dare I say, the best female wrestler in North America right now. Uh, yes, certainly I, I was mean, last night. There is Io Shirai. There are a lot of other people, but you know what? You could put them all there right now. There's nobody better than Serena Deeb coming off that knee injury. And yes, it seems like anybody that has been trained by QT Marshall and has gone through the nightmare factory slash factory, whatever you want to call it, like. They their curve does not seem to be as jagged as some other people, and Red Velvet certainly was not just sitting there as a, a set of handles in that ring waiting for Serena Deeb to pick her up and take her around. She held up to her end of the deal, too, but Serena Deeb was a fantastic ring general last night. Taz and Christian Cage and that feud, I, I you know, for... It's not been perfect, but I thought how they went with last night I thought was great. I thought Moxley and Kingston, you know, starting off by punching Caster and Bowens for the rap that they had, you know, going into the match. You know, Moxley came over, punched Bowens. That was one of the funniest things of the night. One of the funniest things, uh, I thought. And you saw it coming from a million miles away, and it was still great. Small thing. They went with Joan Jett's version of, of Wild Thing. That makes a big, big difference, okay? If you've ever seen the movie Wild Thing, you, you'd know that. Or if saw Onita come out, you would know that. And that little twist on that music makes a big, big difference. And Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, Darby Allen, Sting... You know, I'm not uh, really enthused about it. I'm not enthused about Sting going back into the ring and wrestling without cinematic presentation. But it is what it is. He's going to be out there. And Sky and Page are both really good workers, so it might be good. Uh, I'm just not as into it as I am a lot of the other things on the show. And, of course, the biggest thing, probably the pinnacle in inner circle uh, feud once again coming to fruition uh, with the stadium stampede to where the inner circle agrees. And we'll see how that goes. I'm not, I don't like this match in this scenario. And you and Dave talked about it last night. Other people have as well, too. A lot of the charm, a lot of the great feelings about uh, Stadium Stampede come, came from the fact that it was comedy, came from the fact that there were lots of sight gags. We're going from war games to Stadium Stampede where it should be about blood, it should be about violence, it should be about settling a war, settling a feud, settling a guy that was supposedly pushed off the cage and was attempted to be killed by this new leader of this other faction. How is this going to play itself out? And I'm not completely, you know, bearish on the whole thing, but it'll be interesting to see how this plays out with five different fights going on at the same time if it's supposed to be this big, big blood feud. It'll be interesting how, how they play things, so... We'll have to see how it goes, uh, but again, last night, there was so much win on that show last night, so many little things, Jericho and Milenko, Jericho saying that he forgot a couple holds, I, it just, all the, there were so many small things that I thought really made the show great. 
If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.